What's good YouTube? Welcome back to the channel with the new highly anticipated release of Fear of God Times Adidas Athletic Collection. I thought, hmm, how cool would it be to model this in Blender? So in today's video, not only will I be going over how I 3D modeled the sneaker and brought it to life, but I'll also be giving you guys tips and tricks that if you follow along with, you'll be able to create any 3D footwear that you desire with ease. So with that being said, let's hop into the video. So hopping into Blender 3D, the first thing that we want to do is import our reference images. You can find these easily online, but I'll also be releasing the HD versions on my Patreon, which is free. Now, once we have our reference images in place, let's go ahead and start building out the soul. There's many ways to go about this, but one way that I like to go about it is just adding a simple cube, extruding it out and aligning the vertices to the shape of the soul. All right, so now once we got the top down view all aligned, now it's time to move to the side view. Now what you wanna do is just slowly put up your vertices until it's matching with the side reference. This is very important that they both match to get the actual shape of the shoe. Now just go ahead and align it a little bit more until it's perfect. Now, after we got our align and we got the shape that one, let's go ahead and add a subdivision modifier. But now you can see once we add the subdivision modifier, we get this very rounded shape where we don't want. So the easy fix for this is to add a mean bevel weight and a mean crease and just bring it all the way to one. This will sharpen our edges and get the desired look that we're looking for. So as you can see, it's nice and sharp. Now let's go ahead and add a shade smooth and just do a look around and look at it. Now, once we got the base shape, let's go ahead and add a little bit more details. We're going to add a loop cut through the middle and also adjust the points to fit the curvature of the shoe. Now with the sole complete, let's go ahead and make the upper. which is very, very easy. What we're gonna do is we're gonna select the top face of the sole and just extrude the edges upward. Now, the reason we're doing this is so that we can manipulate the points to match the curvature of the actual shoe. Now, once you got the base layer down, what you wanna do is just move the points until they're matching up with our reference. Now, once we got the reference down pack, go ahead and extrude we're gonna go ahead and extrude our points to match the outline of the shoe. All right, so once we're done extruding and getting that base shape down, let's go ahead and look in a different perspective so we can further shape this shoe. So we're gonna put this point outward so that we can get the three dimensional of it because right now it's just 2D and flat. But once we adjust it with our different angles, you can start to see that the form of the shoe is being brought to life. Now just go ahead and move those points. There we go. Now you just, you don't have to get it perfect, but just right enough. Now with our outline complete in our form, we're ready to start filling this up with polygons. So what you can do is shift click the edges and just hit F, which is shortcut for fill. Now once you fill it, we're gonna do this for the rest of the remaining of the upper of the shoe. There we go, and we're just looking at it, make sure everything's good. And you know, it's best to avoid triangles, not only for the shape of the shoe, but also for when we're texturing. So by using the knife tool, we can redirect the flow of our topology. So go ahead and take the knife tool and just cut those sections until we get a better topology. And we're just gonna dissolve those edges and fill the remaining of the shoe. All right, so if we take a close look at our reference image, what I like to do when I'm building out the topology is always follow the details of the shoe and then build off of that because it's very easy if you want to split something off or if you want to extrude if the topology already matches the actual details of the shoe so as you can see this top section and this bottom section of the upper are two different pieces so once i divide them with the geometry i go ahead and start filling it in and you'll see why this is important as we move forward building out this model as we fill the rest of the polygons we also have to keep in mind that they are not properly positioned. So we have to go into the top view and position them properly in order to get the curvature of the shoe. So once you got that basic eye line, let's go ahead and fill up the side view and move on to the top view. The top view is, once again, it's very important that you focus on the side and the top because that is really what's gonna give you your form. If something is off nine times out of 10, your top view is not properly shaped to your reference. All right, so once we get the first side, what we're gonna do is just duplicate a couple of these vertices and move it over and connect them using 
the merge tool, I have a shortcut on my mouse. If you want to increase the speed of your models, use shortcuts. They're very, very, very helpful. It's literally in the name, shortcut. So once we got that other side duplicated, now it's time to fill in the other side. And as you can see, these purple lines indicate a mean bevel weight and a mean crease. And we don't want that on the actual upper. The reason why they're still here is because we took the geometry from the sole and extruded it up. So it's a quick fix. All you have to do is select all, go to your edge data, drop the mean weight down and drop the mean bevel weight down and drop the crease down. All right, with everything selected, let's go ahead and duplicate the left side of the shoe. All right, so once we have everything selected, make sure that you're only selecting the left side and you are not selecting the middle portion and the bottom portion. So once that is complete, let's go ahead and duplicate this. And while in vertex mode, we're gonna mirror vertices along the X axis. There you go. And now once we got this mirror, you gotta keep in mind that the a shoe design is asymmetrical. So if this was a symmetrical shoe, then as soon as you mirrored it on the other side, it would have fit perfectly. But because foot is not asymmetrical, there's a little bit more work that we have to put into the right side of the shoe. And that entails just moving these vertices until they line up. And then once that is complete, you wanna go to the back and fill in the rest of the polygons. So usually you can model your sneaker with just two reference images, but it's always great to at least have four. The top, the bottom, the back, and the front and the side. So the more reference you have, the more accurate that your model is going to be in the final presentation. So as you can see, I'm using the back reference right here to just fine tune those points and to match up with the actual shoe. So once we got everything modeled and everything shaped, I just like to go into the scope mode and just refine it a little bit. So just bringing some points up, bringing some points down. One thing I notice when modeling these shoes, you want to have some imperfection. You don't just want to model the shoe so that it's just perfect. You want to model with some dents. You want to model with some bumps because at the end, it will give your renders so much realism to truly bring it to life. You see, I'm just taking a grab brush, just taking some points and just bringing them up, bringing it down. And also keep in mind that if you look on the left side, I also have my side view and I'm just going back and forth between my side view and my top view to make sure that I'm getting the proper form. Now the scope tool is a great tool to use. And this is why I love the scope tool because it's very versatile. The scope tool is an amazing tool to use while 3D modeling your footwear. If you want to learn more about how to harness the power of each tool, go ahead and click my redesigning John Morant first signature shoe. So after the sculpting process, I just like to go back into my vertex and make sure that the shape of the shoe is still accurate and that we so are just doing a, a quick glance at what we got so far of the upper. Let's go ahead and project the actual image onto our shoe so we can do a couple more modifications. So all you gotta do is go into edit mode, hit A, and then project from view. Now you can see that we have our UV map open on the left side of the screen. What you wanna do is you wanna scale up your model until it fits perfectly with your reference. All right, so now once we have our texture image projected onto the shoe, let's begin modeling our side panels of the upper. We're gonna start with a simple plane. Now we don't want the plane just floating in the air. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the snapping tool to snap the vertices to the face of the upper. So as you can see now, the plane is snapping. So what we wanna do is just extrude it along the upper. But one issue that I ran into extruding the planes was that getting these beveled edges. So what I had to do, I had to restart and just use vertices at first in order to outline the beveled edges. So with the vertices, we're just snapping them to the face. So this is the reason why it's important to project your texture image onto your shoe so that you have a, a visual representation of the details of the shoe. So once you got your loop cuts in place, let's go ahead and move them so that they are lining up with our reference image. So if we take a look at our reference image, you can see that the side panel has this beveling effect going on. So instead of modeling it and then adding a bevel modifier, what we're gonna do is just trace the outline and then extrude the front faces forward to give that bevel effect. I found this way to be easier when modeling this shoe. So once we got all the faces selected, all you wanna do is just move it forward. And now you'll get that beveling effect. And then you'll see it better once we use the metallic preset. 
Now, with the metallic preset, you can very much see how this is coming out with those sharp crease edges that give you that nice beveled look. Now, instead of using Shade Smooth, I use Shade Auto Smooth, which gives you a very hard edge and not a soft edge. And that's exactly the look that we're looking for. So after we got the initial shape down, I'm just playing around with the solidify modifier and the bevel modifier. As you can see, I do not have a subdivision on this modifier yet. Now, once we get the initial shape down, once we get everything good, then we can add a subdivision modifier to clean up the areas. Initially, because we don't have a subdivision modifier on here, one thing that I did was manually go in and the edges that were too sharp, I just manually beveled them with control B. And one thing about beveling edges, you usually get some nasty geometry. So that's very easy to clean up. Just select them and merge by distance. Or you can either use merge by distance or just merge them all together. So just going forth and just cleaning this up. Now it's important to clean up your geometry for when we're UV unwrapping our model and when we're texturing. You don't want anything more than you actually need. So with the side paneling complete and it's looking how I want it to do, we're gonna speed up this process and just go ahead and add a mirror modifier and mirror it across the X axis. Now, once that is complete, just go ahead and apply your modifier and clean up your model and merge the points that is intersecting with. Now, this is probably one of the mistakes that if I were to redo this model, that I would do differently. Before I actually extrude the side to get that beveling effect, I would leave it flat and then mirror it to the other side and then project it onto the shoe with snapping. Because remember, the shoe is not symmetrical, it's asymmetrical. So there's a lot of fine tuning and adjustment that you need to do in order to get the asymmetrical look. And as you can see here, I use the snapping for the other face to make sure that it is properly onto the shoe. All right, so now going back to the principle of what it, which I was talking about earlier in the video where you want to have your topology run along the lines of the detail of the shoe. Because as you can see now, it's no problem and it's very easy to split a section off of the shoe that needs to be split off. You can see we have the upper and we also have the top of the upper, which was very easy to split because we follow details of the reference image. Now, once we split the upper, let's go ahead and make it its own object and add a thickness to get that sock lining effect. So once we got the upper, the bottom upper and the top upper selected, you can see that it looks thin. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a solidifier just to give it some thickness for realism. Now, depending on where your solidify modifier is in the stack, it can give you a different look. So as you can see right here, I have it above the subdivision, which gives us a tighter edge around the border. All right, so with the bottom complete, let's go ahead and move on to the top piece, which is the same process as the bottom. We're gonna add that solidify modifier and put the subdivision underneath it. So sometimes a tip and a trick for you guys is to have a subdivision before and have a subdivision after. So let's go ahead and add a little bit more geometry so that we can better shape the top half of the upper. All I did was take the bottom vertices and just extrude them down and scale it down so that it's not clipping with the other mesh, but it's sitting right underneath the bottom upper. There we go. Just check it, make sure it looks good all around. All right, so now with the upper top half and bottom half complete, let's move on to the stitching of the shoe. Now you can do this completely in the texturing phase, but for me, in order to enhance the realism of this shoe, I decided to actually model a placeholder for the stitches. Now to create the placeholder is the same technique that we used for the side paneling. Take a plane, activate the snapping, and add a subdivision and solidify modifier. And you just wanna make sure that you follow it and that it's straight, it's not curved, but it's just following the path that the stitches were, would actually go on the physical shoe. Now, once you get the first one done, all you need to do is just duplicate it and align it to the side of the shoe. Now, you don't want this placeholder to be too thick. If you look at any stitch on a shoe, it's not that much displacement on it. It's usually just rise a little bit. Now, once we get the stitches done, now let's work on the back strap of the shoe, which is simple. It's the same thing. A lot of times when we're modeling these shoes, it's a lot of techniques that we're gonna be using over and over again. 
So we're just using snapping with the subdivision and the solidify modifier. The shoe is already coming to life. So now let's just go ahead and do a little bit more refinement and tweaking to the shoe to get it exactly where we want it to be. And usually what I like to do is change view mode and just look around, make sure there's nothing poking out. Make sure there's nothing that looks funny before I move on. For example, like this stitch lace holder looking out of place. All you need to do is just go into your solidify modifier and take down the thickness of the placeholder. So a lot of the times you're gonna have to go back and just refine your model piece by piece. If you really want an efficient and clean and realistic model, take your time. That's the best advice that I would have for you. Just take your time. Don't rush the process and really dig deep into making sure that these details are perfect. Now to make the tongue of the shoe, let's go ahead and extrude it from the top of the upper. I want to make sure that everything is perfectly aligned. So go ahead and move those down one by one and make sure that we got a pretty decent. Now because we only extruded the middle section now we have to extrude the side section which is easy all you need to do is just extrude the vertices connect them with f and you're good to go so let's make sure that nothing is floating on our model like this front strap let's go ahead and embed it into the thing so now moving on to the laces as you can see we have a simple curve and we're going from the top view down and we're just extruding it now, once we have it from the top view down, all we need to do is just adjust it from different angles. So I will be making a tutorial on laces and different methods that I use. But for the method that I used for this one was just using the curve and adding some thickness to the curves. And with the laces complete, that is how you 3D model the fear of God in Adidas athletic collection. Now, one thing I like to do after I'm done modeling the footwear is always view it in different mat caps. The reason you want to view it in different map cats is because there might be some imperfections. There might be something that you miss. And always viewing it in a different shader will show you, for example, like this metallic map cap. If something was off, you would see it. And you don't want anything to be off because when you're texturing the shoe, if it's off with the metallic, it's most likely going to be off with your textures. If you like this shoe modeling tutorial, go ahead and hit the like button and leave in the comment section below what you learned and what shoe would you like to see next. With all that being said, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. All right, you guys, have a blessed year.